It is uh, absolutely uh, my pleasure uh, and delight to be able to introduce uh, uh, Christina Varjan Shihan uh, as our next uh, interview. Um, because I have to say, I don't think I would be here if it weren't for uh, Varjan Shihan's uh, role modeling when I was first starting uh, Aikido. Um, in particular, uh, she has been the, the uh, champion of putting on women's camp starting in 1994, I believe. Um, and that was really a pivotal experience uh, for many women, I think, that has kept uh, the training uh, going. Um, and so uh, I really do think that she has been an incredible role model for so many people. Um, and it all started out when she started uh, um, training in Aikido at New York Aikikai in 1975, while she was actually a professional dancer at the time. And she moved to um, New Mexico and then also uh, started training under um, Chiba Shihan in San Diego as part of the Kenchusei program. And after graduating uh, from that program, um, moved to Hawaii and founded her own dojo, Koala Aikikai. Uh, she also teaches uh, seminars and um, all over the United States and Europe. And she's part of Birinkai North America's Senior Council. Um, and another little known fact about her is she is also a Feldenkrais practitioner, and she brings all of that experience into uh, really teaching wonderful, inspiring Aikido classes. And so it is totally my uh, pleasure to have her join us uh, today and to really just learn from her background and her expertise. Um, so I would love to, again, I will also open this up for questions so people can um, type in the chat, um, but I will uh, start off uh, with just asking the question, uh, Christina Sensei, if you would just talk about your early experiences of um, being a dancer and suddenly discovering Aikido and, and what that experience was like for you. Okay, that's a big one, Mallory, but thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. I, I am really happy to be here with everyone, um, seeing all these wonderful women together in this um, seminar. Um, I wish I knew all of you personally. I hope one day I do know all of you personally because um, I'm just seeing a lot of a lot of uh, not only familiar faces but familiar energy and exciting energy going on. Um, let's see. Um, I started um, well. I started dance in when I was very very young. I had an issue with my my legs that were strong and they were weak, so my family sent me into dance. Um, and uh, very happy that they did. Um, but when I, um, I was with uh, Henry Smith, <laughs> introduced me really to Aikido. Um, he uh, told me, um, I was dancing with him in a, in a dance company and he said, you know, you really should look at this um, demonstration at this high school. Um, this was 1975 and it was Koichi Tohei and um, he was doing a demonstration at a high school in New York City and I saw this presentation of uh, Koichi Tohei and two other ukes on the stage and I just could not believe what I was seeing. I was feeling their their energy, feeling their, not only the movement attracted me, but something between, in between the movement, their connectedness. And I had never seen, maybe I'd felt it on stage as a dancer, but when I saw it in this way of projection of energy between individuals, I just woke up in the morning at 6.30, knocked on New York Aikikai's door, and that was it. That was it. I, I did have difficulty in the beginning. I could move, I could roll, I could um, pretty much imitate movement, but I was, I was up and flying away. I had no idea of my center. I, I, um, it, it, was, it was really an eye opener to, to, to feel that there was so much more to movement and to interaction with others um, in the Aikido world. And, that's what I've been looking for and searching for all these years and little bits and pieces come in, but you know, as you know, we're all, we're all still trying to get a hold of that because we're working with different people all the time and every single encounter is different. And um, that's what I, I love about it. It's, it's moment to moment. It changes your idea of, oh, I've got this. 
Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, how about telling us a little bit about your uh, the training at New York Aikikai in the 70s? Um, well, um, my first um uh, my first class was um that early morning class and i remember right away there were other advanced there were there were advanced women that i could look at and um feel supported there was sibylla han there was uh lynn morrison there was jane ozeki um and immediately I felt taken under their, uh, under their um, wings. And um, I, you know, I, fortunately it was at a time when there were a lot of women at the New York Ike Kai. I think um, they've had that, that um, body of women there for a long time. Um, and so I, and, and then Gina Zerilli was in there the, a month later, you know, and so it was, and it was a small group of all of us. So we were, we were, getting in the van and driving up to Boston Nike Kai to see Kanai Sensei. Mrs. Yamada was making us little rice balls for our trip up. Um, it was a very um, family, family uh, group. You know, Yamada Sensei was there uh, every single class. I was at every single class. Um, luckily as a dancer, I had no work at the time when I started. So I, I just, put everything I had into that, into that time. Um, I was really fortunate to be able to, um, after six weeks of training, get on a plane and go to where I first saw Chiba Sensei in England um, with Yamaguchi Sensei and take a seminar there with him. Um, it, it, you know, to say it was a special time, I think now is a special time as well, but for me personally, it couldn't have been more exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you moved to San Diego and uh, you and I had a personal conversation early on. And I always remember that the difference between having multiple teachers during your Aikido career that give you different things, you know, and we all, all are truly blessed if we can stay with the same teacher, but forever, whatever reasons we move, um, they pass on, we, we change teachers and, and talk about that uh, transition and and, and also, I, you shared with me something that has always resonated about the beauty of um, uh, getting different things from different teachers, almost as if you go through kind of a finishing school. Yeah, um, I agree. I agree. Um, having different teachers at different times in our lives, somehow those times and those teachers almost match up to what we're going through at that time in our life. Um, when right before i decided to move to san diego i um chiba sensei came to um i think it was southwestern aikikai dennis abbott was the chief instructor uh there and it was i was feeling stuck i just felt my aikido was staying at a certain uh plateau um not that I wasn't loving it, but I didn't feel like my growth as a woman, as a, an Aikidoist, as a um, connection, my connection in society, nothing, it wasn't, just wasn't changing. So I, I, I got up the courage to say to Chiba Sensei, can I be in your Kenshusei program? He was just at the beginning of starting it. And when he said yes, I, I couldn't believe that he said yes. I, 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 uh, I realized, wow, you've done it now. So I, um, uh, my husband, uh, Rico, and my two daughters, um, Cedra and Marisa, we all, we got in our cars, moved to San Diego and uh, just um, started the Ken Shuse program, got them into new schools. Um, but it, w it was transformative. It was transformative to, to be able to focus my whole life in that direction, I feel very lucky to be, have been able to do that. Um, you know, he he at that time he really um, was open to allowing someone with a family to be able to be in that program. So maybe I didn't make the five o'clock or six thirty class, but I was there the whole day, and maybe I was you know went home and made dinner and then came back or when we did uh, um, 
Rohatsu's or Seishin's. Um, Mrs. Chiba would let me in the side door because I had to get the, the kids home, you know, it to school, you know, and then, and then sneak in the side before anyone saw me. Those little things that, you know, were just flexible enough to allow um, someone that had a family to be in this world as well. I really appreciated that about that time. Um, other teachers, yeah, I, you know, um, when I lived in France, um, I studied with um, Noro Sensei, and um, there are some funny stories that there, but uh, um, they're also kind of, um, I'm not sure. If <laughs> I want to go into them as well, but, um, you know, uh, they all had such different, uh, different views of what what composed what what composed of being an aikidoist being a woman aikidoist being a martial artist um some were less um to you know feel that you were you were serious some were didn't even see that difference uh some really encouraged you to push forward um like i think for me chiba sensei really encouraged me um to do women, women's camps, to work with women, to um, speak up. Um, and I just wanted to say, Mallory, for the beginning, um, in 1994, it was Rahab Yaqub who started those women's camps in um, here in, in um, New Mexico at Ghost Ranch. So I, I just wanted to give her credit for that. But um, Chiba Sensei did. Um, you know, in the in the 80s and the, uh, the 90s, really say go out and, and work with women. Go help women feel that feel that um, that ability that they can do this too. Um, and at first, I was like, really, I just want to be with everybody. I don't want to separate myself. Um, but I've come to learn through doing the women's camps that it's the women that are giving me and teaching me about themselves, about Aikido, about connecting, about each one of their worlds. Um, that, uh, yeah, I, I, it's opened a whole new world to me. And I'm just happy that we, I'm unfortunate can't do it this year, but next year we'll, we're back on schedule. Um, so. Yeah, good? let's. Uh... Let's bring it back to just talking a little bit more about um, uh, there was a big hiatus, like 20, 25 years where um, between the camps and you have revitalized uh, the women's camp. Um, and I think it has come out of kind of a cultural, cultural shift um, that has made people feel like uh, that focus is necessary again. Um, and the, the last couple of years, uh, incredible camp uh, in Santa Fe. Um, and uh, I think uh, a lot of women are really feeling um, supported by it and that it is actually a great way for them to um, develop their training in a really supportive environment and then be able to go back into their own dojos having gained something that they wouldn't normally get otherwise. Can you talk a little bit more about what your goals and your hopes are, especially for kind of young women coming up and what you want them to get out of a women's camp? Yeah, um, you know, when I started, as I, what's three years ago now, going on four years, um, at first, when I started it again, I thought we we need to do this again. I, but it was really the women responding to that call that gave me the energy to to do it. It was I was I was just blown away that it, it wasn't just women from Birankaya. It was women from the USAF. It was women from all organizations that really gave me the fire to to push forward and, and, and bring this camp to, to fruitation. Um, and I, what I would like to see, um, you know, I've been encouraging um, and trying to get younger women to come into the, um, to the group, um, more women of color, more women of, of different backgrounds, um, younger ranking women, um, older women. Um, it's not, right now the, the, the group is, a lot of older women, um, I'm probably one of the oldest, but um, I'd like to see more, more people that are women that are beginning and wanna, wanna taste what it's like uh, to, to be uh, um, surrounded by an all women's camp. 
And I think Dina, Dina Drake Sensei said it beautifully. She said, you know, it's not that we come here because there aren't any men. It's because we, we come here because there are just so, so many of us together that we don't usually get that, um, a bit, you know, that, that uh, time together to have so many women on the mat um, in one place and exchange our ideas. And um, some women have said to me, you know, I love being on the mat and training, but I love the talks, how we get to talk with each other in the evenings or during lunch and eat together and share our, our, um, the positive things that we're sharing in Aikido, the things that we want to change. Um, yeah. I, I have also really noticed, and this is kind of throughout, you know, my years in Aikido too, that there's a quality of women teaching Aikido that is often different. Uh, and you can really feel it at a women's camp. And it's great to be able to give the spotlight to women instructors who generally aren't on a seminar circuit. They're not getting invited because, you know, they don't feel like there's a draw for, for women. I, who knows what? But uh, that they suddenly have the spotlight at a women's camp. And to see so many women teaching, and I would say there's a generosity in teaching and a style in teaching. And oftentimes women are coming at their teaching having uh, multiple backgrounds in either, you know, anatomy or gymnastics, dance, Feldenkrais, yoga, um, and you in particular too, were always inspiring to me in terms of kind of bringing in that wealth of knowledge in the way that you teach. Any, any thoughts about uh, how women teach differently or advice to, to what you think makes a good teacher? Hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't, I think women discover, what I have seen with uh, women teaching at women's camp is, um, you know, you, uh, I try to spread it out and have women that have been experienced and, and then also that haven't had a lot of experience teaching. And what I have seen on both sides, women that have experience and then women that don't has it, have as much, that the things that come out of their teaching while they're um, at camp are, um, maybe a topic will come up out of a technique or a, you know, a, um, a freedom that they feel all of a sudden in front of being, being up in front of all these women. I'm like, I would say, wow, I never knew that woman would take that angle or um, take that idea from doing an ikkyo and bring it into the class. Or wow, that woman hasn't done much teaching, but look at how she's explained something that I haven't seen someone else explain ever. Uh, and it, it just is these little pearls of, of physical uh, wisdom, you know, spiritual wisdom, um, uh, just ideas that come out from a, a feeling of, I think, getting up there and feeling free and feeling empowered and feeling not judged. Um, and I think uh, that's, that's something to, to, to say uh, towards a, a woman's camp of being able to have all those things right there for you, um, not feeling judged, not feeling that you have to perform, um, that you're supported. I've seen that come out of every woman that is taught at, at a woman's camp, uh, no matter what their, their, their level was or what their rank was. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And, and hopefully the idea is that it gets generated there and then can move out into the bigger Aikido world as well. Exactly. And taken into their own dojos or given them that feeling that I'm opening a dojo, that I am, you know, giving this to other women when I go to, to a seminar. Just that, just that presence that you can take and carry around with you from that, that one moment in time. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I'm going to um, open this up a little bit, and I'm seeing some questions coming in in the chat. Um, and oh, here's, no. <laughs> <laughs> here's one that I love, and, and uh, I really would love to basically hear the, the secrets from Christina Varjan Chihan on this one as well, too, because as a long-term practitioner, I have just seen you maintain your health and your flexibility and movement in Aikido incredibly well. And someone wants to know, what are your secrets? How do you deal with the challenge of injuries and physical limitations as you have had such a long-term Aikido career? Hmm. 
Well, um, I think about that every day. Um, and the thing for me as a, as a you know, ex-dancer, an Aikidoist, a Feldenkrais Christ practitioner, flexible spine. Flexible spine, flexible mind. Um, uh, I think if we can keep our spines flexible, just doing soft rolls on the mat, just um, being aware of, of um, how Sam, Sam was talking about. I thought her, her, her demonstration earlier was she really got into the awareness of taking a step, where her weight was, um, where, how she um, moved from a small movement from one thing to the other. Um, you know, uh, let's see. I was going to talk about, I was going to talk about um, how just through, you know, especially now in this time that we're not, we're not in uh, training in our dojos with each other, rolling, falling, um, just being in a, you know, in a position where you can sense yourself, sense how you're sitting, how you're standing, how you're lying on the floor, that you can bring all that awareness into when we're able to get up and be back in our classes and interact with each other. But um, I don't know, I, I can't stop moving. I, I, <laughs> I'm constantly moving, even if I'm doing the dishes or I'm you know, um, walking my dog or, or meditating, I'm thinking about movement. And I think central to, our, to all that movement is the spine. Um, how I, how that I express that to you um, is, uh, and, 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 and the feeling of, you know, we have this idea, I think, oh, I'm limited. I can't move this way. Um, I've never been able to do that. If we can get a, a feeling in us, the only thing that prevents us from really doing movement that we want to expand on or get better at or, um, learn how to do is our belief in, in holding ourselves back from that. So if I'm constantly saying, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, maybe just opening up your mind a little and take, taking little movements, breathing um, that um, movement, imagining that movement, and then slowly trying it a little bit, little by little. Yeah, beautiful. Um, as uh, just to, to comment on too, we are all in this whole different world of pandemic yeah. and training in different ways and just that body awareness. And I know that you have also become a Feldenkrais practitioner and maybe saying a little bit about how that kind of study of the body informs um, your practice as well. Yeah. Um, like I said, I think uh, the Feldenkrais um, method, you know, being in a somatic education, um, you know, just sitting, if everyone's, you know, just watching right now, sitting with, with us here um, in a chair or sitting on the mat, uh, you know, just noticing where your weight is, where are, you know, is your weight heavier in one hip or in the other, are your two feet on the ground equally, not trying to change anything in your life, but just giving yourself an awareness of your presence. What's the curve of your spine? Am I, do I have tension in my jaw? Am I frowning? What, how, is, how am I walking through life? How am I walking through this time of COVID-19? How am I walking through this time of thinking about everyone in the world and relating to everyone that is around me? All those things are informing my um, nervous system. So when I'm on the mat, I'm informing that person in front of me. I'm informing um, how I respond to that instead of maybe reacting. So just taking that moment, settling ourselves, breathing into ourselves. And, you know, even um, I, go, I go back to Sam's class. I loved how she was getting into the Ikkyo and going off to the side for that movement and expanding her ribs. Okay, the awareness of those ribs are moving. You know, a rib is not just a, it's, a, we call it a rib cage, but it's in the German way, it's rib basket. It's a movable, sensitive thing. It's um, 
sometimes we get feel like we're locked inside of our bodies to feel like we have we're reaching out further from our centers and it doesn't stop at the edge of our skin it extends into the space around us that's a that's an idea that the feldenkrais gives me when when i'm in you know in a class or in a in my aikido world i, I love that comment of the rib basket that's great isn't that great yeah. Um, we have a question from someone who is a dancer who wants to know a little bit about what type of dance you did, what choreographers informed you, and then also uh, how uh, you may have uh, either had to let go of things from dance or how it informed your Aikido. Um, uh, yeah, I, um, I started when I was about eight, nine years old in ballet. I had a very lucky to have a very famous ballet uh, teacher, Andre Glefsky. He was with the um, Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. Um, I um, then moved in, I was in New York City, so I, I got a lot of training with um, New York City Ballet, Pennsylvania Ballet, um, Ballet Theater. Um, and then I moved to um, Paris, where I, and for, in Europe, where I worked with Pina Bausch and um, Carolyn Carlson at the Paris Opera and moved away from ballet. I one day I just took those toe shoes and threw them out the window and um, started working with theater dance and, and modern dance. And um, again, I think that for me, that time in, in my dance career was just a, an exciting moment. Everything was exploding in the dance world. Uh, um, how lucky, how lucky was I to, to work with all these people and um, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Um, well, I know we have hit our time and I want to be respectful of passing things on to uh, Nomura Shihan, yeah. but just wanting to check yeah. to make sure she's uh, on the call. Is she there? Uh, I think we're still working on some issues. Um, Sensei, are you there? We're hoping that uh, she'll be able to call in by the phone. Um, if not, we also have a fabulous um, backup plan that is in no way plan B, but <laughs> we have one ready if, uh, if uh, let's see if Nomura Shihan can call in by phone. Yeah, I'll give it Actually, a call. Yeah. Hey, this is, this is Alan. Uh, oh, Alan, we lost you. Um, Thank you, Christina. Well, that was fabulous. Thank you. Thank everyone for doing this, putting this together. You're all amazing women. We're all amazing women and we have to keep this, this power going. Well, and last question was actually a plug for where is women's camp happening? Tell us about that. Okay. Women's camp, uh, 2021, um, Santa Fe, New Mexico, same, um, Immaculate Heart of, Heart of Mary retreat center from the 9th through the 12th of September. I will get all that out and, and have that information going to everyone. Fabulous. Great. Thank you so much. Love you.